Hello everyone, welcome back to Mac One Design EMC channel. In previous episodes, we've talked about capacitors. In one video, we introduced these three terminal capacitor. Sometimes we call them feed-through capacitors, and we compare the performance between a three terminal capacitor against a normal two terminal capacitor. And the conclusion was that the three terminal capacitor has better performance in the so-called equivalent series inductance region, okay? And in another video, we talked about capacitor layout, where we put two identical capacitors in a symmetrical way. By doing that, the field, the magnetic field, actually got cancelled out. Therefore, they also achieve lower ESL. There's another type of capacitor we haven't talked about. And in today's video, we're going to cover that. These capacitors are called X to Y capacitors. Some people know them well, many people ha actually have never heard of them. So in today's video, we're going to have a look at X to Y capacitors. Particularly, we're going to look at how to use them as a decoupling capacitor and see the performance. So let's check it out. So before we have a look at their performance, let's have a look at the difference between a X to Y capacitor and a three terminal capacitor because they look pretty much the same. Right? This is your um, X to Y capacitor, and I'll show you the three terminal capacitor. Look, this is the three terminal capacitor. They look pretty much the same, right? And also the grounding point of a three terminal capacitor on the uh, on these two sides, right? And the X to Y are the same. So X to Y, these two are the grounding points. However, the big big difference, right? Really is if you look at uh, the terminal A and the B, right? In this case, you can see that's how they cancel the uh, the field. But when you look at their um, application nodes, right, uh, particularly if you look at how we use them as a decoupling capacitor, you see the grounding point is connected to ground, right? So in this case, you have two grounding points. That's fine. However, if you look at po point A and B, right, both A and B have to be connected to this line, right? Let's say this is your power line. And this is a unbroken line, okay? So as if you have to connect this capacitor to the same line, but two points, okay? So that's X to Y capacitor. If I show you the three terminal capacitor, look, there's a difference, right? Because these, are these two are your grounding points, right? However, this this is this line is where you place that three terminal capacitor. So the capacitor is a feed through feature. Okay. So when you connect that, this is your capacitance to ground, and this is also your capacitance to ground. And this capacitor itself, because it is a feed through, so this capacitor provides the uh, short circuit you can call it between two little pads. Okay. So. To, in order to demonstrate that, let's have a look at a very simple test we do. We are using a multimeter just to check, okay? So this is your three terminal feed-through capacitor. So if I probe in these two, you can see they are connected, right? Yeah, so you can hear it, they are connected, they are, they, there's a passing through pass basically, and the two grounds of course also are sharing the same potential. So that's your three terminal capacitor, okay? So move that one out. And this is our X to Y capacitor. So this is a slightly small package. So this is 0805, see that? And if I do the same with the two ground first, right? So you can see the grounds are connected. However, point A and B, they are not connected, okay? So it's not a feed through feature. So when you're using this capacitor, you're gonna have to you you have to use it on on a, on a straight line on on one track, right? Uh, yeah. So that's the difference between the two. And now we move to the testing part. If you haven't watched my previous videos, I suggest you do that first because in the previous videos we talked a lot about the test setup. Therefore, I will not repeat the test setup. But basically, I have a special jig where I can use this to test lots of things. And in this case, we're testing the S21 um, of a capacitor, and we're using the high impedance pass 180 ohm. And of course, uh, working this together with a VNA. And I'm gonna compare the performance of two capacitors, right? So showing you here. Here, you can see that I have to make 
some change because remember, right, this board I used it before for comparing three terminal capacitors, but now because of because of the fact that the X2Y capacitor does not have the feed-through uh, feature, therefore I just added a tiny little wire uh, to, to connect the, the trays. So we have the 0805 100 nanofarad, okay, 100 nanofarad X2Y cap. So this is the, the, the part, right, which is 100 nanofarad 25 volts X7R0805. And, uh, and here we have another capacitor, okay? It's the same package, 0805, and it is just a normal 100 nanofarad X7R2 uh, terminal capacitor. I can then mount this, because here I have two options here, right? I can mount this on this jig and I test the performance uh, of each capacitor. So let's have a look. So we're gonna start with this uh, uh, this two terminal capacitor first, okay? So I'm gonna mount this in this location. Yeah, so the, the two terminal capacitor is in. Uh, yeah, okay, do that, right? And it's worth mentioning also, before this test, I have already calibrated a feed-through cap uh, calibration. So there is no need to calibrate anymore, okay? okay? So this is the result we got of this normal two terminal capacitor, yeah? That's the S21 result. And I can save this for now, right? And next, we're gonna need to uh, change, right? The other capacitor, so which is our X2Y cap, right? So I'm gonna do that and then measure that again. So this is the result in detail. I'm going to show you. Um, the red trace is the result of your, your normal two-terminal 0805 100 nanofarad capacitor, whereas the blue trace is the X2Y capacitor. So very, very interesting, right? If you think about it, the three-terminal capacitor in the past when we were doing the comparison, the big difference really is the ESL region, as we mentioned, and it can achieve 3 to 6 dB sometimes, right, across uh, the ESL region. But in the capacitive uh, region, the 3 terminal capacitor didn't bring you any benefit. But with the X2Y capacitor, you see, it's not only the ESL region that has better performance, right, lower ESL, but also in the capacitive region, it also has better performance. How many dB difference? Let's have a look. We add a marker, right? This one, and we add another marker. At this one, for example, right? So you can see what's the difference. Let's have a look, these two points. It is about 7 dB difference, 7 dB, four, minus 45 against minus 53, 7 to 8 dB performance improvement. Considering, you know, the modification I made on this board is not ideal, right? So I would think if you do the PCB design properly and apply this X to Y capacitor, you actually really bring... Um, the impedance down by having a X2Y capacitor. So this short video demonstrates the benefit of using this X2Y capacitor. And uh, I hope that I will make a proper PCB demonstration next time, right? And show you uh, many other results. But from this simple demonstration, right, using our jig, it, you can already see that X to Y capacitor actually enjoys lower impedance across the whole frequency range. So that's the message we want to send. Okay, so see you next time.